Hi, everybody. This is Jeff Kelly coming to you from Wikibon World Headquarters here in Marlboro, Massachusetts. Uh, so when we think about big data, we often think about approaches like Hadoop and massively uh, parallel analytic databases. But in a lot of cases, uh, there are enterprises that are struggling with uh, making a better use of their data in their tra more traditional databases, and not every enterprise is uh, in a position now where they actually need these new big data technologies, but again, are really just trying to push performance and get some new insights out of the data they're already currently working with. So today, we're joined by Fred Tabokta, who is going to join us to talk a little bit about these issues. Uh, Fred is with FRS Consulting. He's both an IBM Gold consultant and an IBM Big Data Champion. Fred, welcome to the Cube. Glad to be here. So, as I mentioned at the start, so the big in big data tends to get most of the focus these days, but uh, I understand you're working with clients that really you know, aren't necessarily at that point where they're working with huge volumes of data, but nevertheless have some performance uh, issues they're trying to work through and are always looking for new insights in data. So can you tell us a little bit about the types of challenges you're seeing in your client base and, and the things they're working with? Certainly. The, the, uh Certainly, what I'm finding in, in my customer base, uh, first of all, my customers are a mix of uh, small, medium businesses, Fortune 500 companies, uh, law enforcement, um, public safety, criminal justice. They have uh, traditional needs to be uh, performant for their online users and also integrate well with business partners or other agencies or organizations. So there's uh, been a predominant move toward increasing performance and getting the most out of their database licenses. Those are the most expensive licenses they purchase in their organization for software. So we want to make sure that they're getting their money's worth out of their existing database engines. So that tends to focus on performance tuning and also finding out how much we can get out of the data where it sits in, in the production transactional databases. And it turns out you can actually get quite a lot of insight uh, if you are uh, careful to tune your queries and get the information uh, from the source. So we're finding ways to get data spread around the enterprise more quickly through uh, just efficient queries, uh, asynchronous messaging, and also we're using a lot of XML-based uh, features in the database to uh, present more sophisticated, complete data sets in one pass to uh, inbound and outbound uh, data flows. Interesting. So it's again, they're not really looking to these new types of technologies. They're looking to get uh, more value out of what they've already invested in. Um, so why don't we dig in a little bit more? You mentioned a couple uh, a couple of ways they're trying to do that at the uh, end of your of your first answer. So why don't we dig into into maybe some of the the more popular ways you're seeing or the more effective ways um, you're helping your clients really get the most out of those uh, database technologies they've invested in and are really critical to their business. I'd say the absolute uh, top priority is monitoring, uh, not just for availability, but for performance. And those are different in terms of how, how they're done, and also alerting on any kind of condition that could degrade performance or um, create an outage. So uh, for quite a while now, pretty much since the Internet uh, made systems 24-7 that weren't previously operating in that capacity, uh, finding that a lot of shops just don't normal, know what normal looks like. So we're working on instrumenting the key performance indicators of not just the database engine, but also outlying um, uh, levels of the software stack and the business itself. Um, you can sometimes find out things like uh, if orders aren't coming in at the same rate, it could actually signify a problem with, say, a business partner or a supplier, and you can uh, take advantage of that situation and, and solve a problem, even if it's not originating from your side. So knowing what normal looks like is a huge part of knowing what you can push the system to do for the same license that you're already, you already paid for. Uh, if, if you have some fear or suspicion about, um, I don't know how hard a certain workload is going to hit this system, um, you, you're not going to be as, as willing to investigate uh, leveraging your, your querying tools and your reporting environment and other data integration uh, technologies if you're not sure if your system is, is performing uh, consistently. So. We tend to uh, instrument that data very quickly uh, with anything they have laying around. Um, a lot of times we end up using uh, monitoring software from the networking side because they tend to be the most vigilant about the performance and health of the different uh, pieces of equipment on the network. And um, databases aren't generally uh, monitored by those systems uh, out of the box, but they can be very easily extended to monitor databases. And in that situation, we end up with a very good picture of what the health and typical day of a database 
is like, then we can figure out where are the opportunities to hit it with some analytical workload that you wouldn't necessarily want to just do any time, but find, finding spots where you can uh, extend the use of the database without stressing any of the existing workload. So it's really the kind of that old saying, knowing is half the battle. You really have to understand what's happening in your in your system, and then, as you said, kind of identify those. Uh, I guess would you call them opportunistic uh, areas where you can take advantage of, of um, maybe some available resources to, to drive some of these additional uh, additional jobs you want to do. Definitely. the The other uh, side of it is also to make sure you're not over configured. Um, you're you're, you're unlikely to hear from your vendor that you may have licensed too many CPUs of a database or um, you've uh, got too much going on with uh, uh, the server itself or you're, you're, or you're using a virtualized environment. Um, can you step down the number of cores and still deliver a good response to all of the different workloads that it serves? Uh, you need to have those numbers, but also to see the trends. And so the, the best monitoring implementations I see where folks are getting the, the best response and use of, of their transactional environment is when they also have a record of how these things are being tracked. And I tell you, it does not require um, high-end database licenses or um, very um, advanced performance tools to capture that. You know, the, the networking guys, once again, have come in with uh, software that helps you really develop a, a long-term understanding of your performance uh, and utilization trends so you can plan accordingly. It's going to help with companies that have um, very sporadic budget cycles or long budget cycles. You know, part of the problem with big data and Hadoop and the other um, aspects of it is that they only can purchase uh, technology, you know, once or twice a year perhaps. So there's a lot of planning that has to go in. And then when uh, you arrive at that point and you have to uh, set up your budget and make your commitments, you need to know. Uh, what exactly your target is. So the, the data you get back from monitoring your, your workload and monitoring outages and monitoring other issues that happen in your production environment can really help you make educated decisions whether you're, you're all ready to uh, tackle a big data uh, endeavor or if you're still in the traditional um, transactional space of maybe a data warehouse or a data mart and you just want to make sure that you're using your resources efficiently. Yeah, interesting. So, um, so you're an IBM Gold consultant, IBM Big Data, or I should say, IBM Data Champion. So, obviously, you're you're very well uh, acquainted with IBM's portfolio of uh, data management products. Uh, you know, we've covered them, uh, covered IBM quite heavily in terms of their big data strategy over uh, the last six months to a year. Uh, I wonder, uh, what is your take on how IBM is actually uh, helping their clients with their, I guess you might call it, legacy uh, data management? portfolio, things like uh, DB2, um, how are they, do you, do you think IBM's doing a good job of kind of balancing the innovation they're doing on the big data side while, while still supporting um, kind of uh, their customers who are using uh, maybe not quite as sexy technology, something like DB2, um, that again are really core to their business? Uh, what's your kind of, how would you grade uh, IBM, what are they doing well, and what, what do they need to improve maybe? Well, first of all, I think it's, it's interesting now that anything that's not big data is suddenly legacy because that's, that's um, a, a neat take on things. I, I know there's a lot of hype around it, but to go as far as to say that uh, if you're not running Hadoop, you're writing you know, a buggy um, is, is possibly a, a bit premature. Um, no, definitely, I'd say as an IBM uh, expert uh, focusing uh, my practice primarily on IBM database technologies, it's in a very good spot. What I found consistently over the years is that IBM um, – has uh, done very good research and has done very thorough research in the improvements and enhancements that they introduced into the DB2 engine, both on the mainframe side and on the Linux Unix Windows side. Uh, a lot of people don't um, realize that DB2 runs on Linux Unix and Windows, and, and it actually does very well. Um, but it used to be that something would uh, start off on the mainframe, and then it would be adapted to DB2 on Linux Unix Windows. And that's not so much the case anymore. Um, there are different hardware technologies that they can exploit. Um, you know, power uh, processor line in their uh, P-series servers has uh, features that uh, DB2 can exploit very well at the hardware level. And also um, there are uh, SIMD instructions in the Intel set that can, that can work very well with uh, certain types of uh, database workloads. So IBM is putting the money and the research and the talent on developing, uh, continuing to enhance the DB2 engine. It's just gotten incredible. 
uh, happened to be at the DB2 uh, 10.5 announcement earlier this month at the Almaden Lab. And I tell you, it was it felt a little bit like James Bond getting the briefing from Q on all the new gadgets that are made available to him to uh, do his job. It's pretty incredible what's been coming out of IBM um, for the past few years, especially. Uh, the pure scale announcement that they made in 2009, uh, essentially a faithful, uh, solid, mature implementation of parallel sysplex for non-mainframe environments uh, was, was, a, was a, a huge step forward and in terms of um, delivering massive transactional volume in a, um, an active-active cluster is, um, is no small feat, and they, they really nailed it. And you see over the years, IBM tends to not need to backpedal the direction that they choose for things. Uh, when it comes to the core DB2 engine, it's a very solid piece of technology, and um, I routinely uh, bet my finger on it. I will bet a finger on DB2. Right, yeah, I was also at that event, and, and of course, one of the uh, one of the major announcements was around blue acceleration. What was your take on that? Um, you know, as it applies to uh, bringing, I think, what IBM called speed of uh, speed of thought or speed of business uh, analytic capabilities to uh, DB two. Is that something that you think is going to have a lot of benefit for your clients? Sorry, could you repeat the question one more time? Uh, I was wondering what your take was on blue acceleration. Um, announced uh, at that uh, Almaden event, um, the idea of bringing more, uh, I think what IBM calls speed of thought or speed of business uh, analytics, interactive queries to uh, DB2. And I was wondering what your take was on that technology uh, as it applies to DB2. And, and do you think that's going to have a significant value, hold significant value for your clients? So the, the DB2 blue announcement, uh, which is essentially bolting on a, a column store to the relational and uh, hierarchical XML part of the DB2 engine is, is a fairly radical step forward. It, it really addresses uh, a, a gap that was significant in the past, and, and it was a gap where a lot of, uh, not a lot of, but it was a gap where com competing vendors with competing technologies were, were um, having an advantage. And the, the blue uh, upgrade to the DB2 engine is, is just fantastic in what it allows by reducing the cost of the types of queries that used to be prohibitively expensive to run in your prime transactional database. So do you... So did, what we, sorry, go ahead. Do uh, you want to answer that again with the video? Uh, no, no, just please just continue. Um, so in terms of... Okay. Uh, you know, actually, do you, do you foresee that as something uh, blue uh, for for DB2? Actually, something you're going to see uh, your clients start adopting, um, or is this a little bit more maybe kind of future roadmap kind of thing for your clients? Well, I think as soon as clients understand, uh, DB2 users understand these scenarios and usage patterns where where the blue technology uh, offers a serious advantage, then you'll see, you'll see them adopting it because like the other. Uh, parts of DB2, uh, that when the engine has been uh, upgraded to do uh, new things, uh, it's been done at such a core level that you can mix and match different storage technologies inside of the DB2 engine, have a single query going off to XML, off of the multi-dimensional clustered row tables in one area, and then now with blue tables in the other. Um, these are first-class uh, citizens in the DB2 engine. So when you, when you have a, a, a workload that could benefit from uh, structuring one table, organizing it by column, uh, and, and not having to trade off with the other tables that aren't necessarily um, designed to benefit from that, uh, it's going to be a much lower barrier to entry for, for organizations that are using DB2 and they're confident with it and they understand what it can do for them. So uh, we've got time for just one more question, and I wonder if you could uh, if you could just give one piece of advice to CIOs who are kind of struggling with coming up against uh, you know performance issues in their data management uh, infrastructure. Um, you know, like some of your clients, they're looking for new insights, uh, but have limited budgets and maybe uh, you know aren't in the position where they're going to start investing in some of these uh, big data technologies like Hadoop. What what one piece of advice would you give to those to those folks who are who are looking for help there? Well, you. you uh if you bought a, a vendor database and you have uh, uh, not mastered it, you've not conquered it, and understand every uh, every aspect of it and what it can do for you for the same price, uh, if you're not making total use of your database, um, and, if, and, and if it's because your your staff aren't um, 
uh, versed enough on that database engine to make use of those. I mean, if you have strategic issues or technology issues that are preventing you from fully exploiting the product you paid for, that's one thing. But if your your staff are not up to date on the latest innovations in that in that database engine, then you're, you're really cutting yourself off at the knees. So I'd say that the, a fairly affordable way to get more performance out of, out of your software and hardware is to make sure that your, your IT administrators are trained and up to date on the latest features. That may not necessarily be classroom training. In fact, most of my clients lately have uh, gotten the most benefit from attending technical conferences. And in the case of DB2, it's the IDUG conference, which is happening next week in Orlando. Um, there's also an IBM conference that centers heavily on DB2 and other IBM products. If you get your staff uh, trained and current on the technologies, they're going to take uh, better care of the system. They're going to exploit the, the, the features that you're already paying for in your, in your database. And it could mean um, compression uh, cutting your I.O. It could mean compression cutting your storage costs or a blue table that suddenly makes a very expensive, uh, long-ranging scan a lot more uh, uh, affordable to run in production uh, at any time. So definitely make sure that your people are armed with all the knowledge they need to, to leverage the, the tools they already have. Okay, some good advice. Fred Saboka, thank you so much for joining us. Fred from FRS Consulting uh, talking to us today about some of the uh, technologies and some of the approaches you can take to uh, kind of get the most performance and find some additional insights in your uh, database uh, environment. So Fred, thanks again for joining us, and thanks everybody for watching.